All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy Monday. My name is Marnie Hernandez, and today we are doing our certification for Atlantic Canada Academy. It's under the OTT travel training. Uh, make sure you go ahead and log in and register. And we're going to go ahead and do this together. Uh, follow along on your phone and take the test online. Uh, don't worry if you're running behind, we will wait for you. I also have the chat box open. If you have questions, if you need help, just put it in the chat box and one of the agents will reach out and answer for you. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get started again. Um, you know, if for any re reason we run a little behind, I am recording this so everybody can review it later. All right. So right now, uh, together, welcome to the Atlantic uh, Canada Academy, together the province of New Brunswick, Newfoundland, and Labrador, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island, boasts Canada's most spectacular coastline, more than 26,700 miles, and every seaside activity you can imagine. Warm water, swimming, long walks on uncrowded beaches, nature viewing, on a grand scale and hiking above the arms of the sea. Could you send the link to the page you're reading off of? I can't find the page. Okay. So again, first step is to go here to online um, travel training. Okay. Here is the link. What should I put for the full name of organization? Okay. Again, if it's Archer Travel, if it's asking for agency, Put Archer Travel Services. And the link, what we I just clicked on, you go there and then you go right here to Atlantic Canada. You launch the course. You can find this under product training and destination. Can you guys see my screen okay, everybody? So you go here, product training, destination, you go down here to Atlantic Canada and launch the course. And then it comes up to where I was just reading. Okay. All right, and like I said, we're just reading right now, guys, going over videos. We will wait for you on the test, okay? So don't worry, yes, independent business. All right, so welcome to Canada. So now we'll go ahead and start with the first link lesson up here. It's going to open up lesson overview. Atlantic Canada is made up of four distinct provinces, each with its own set of charms, getaways, and coastal adventures. But we all share the same sea that has shaped our land, history, culture, and cuisine. New Brunswick, Newfoundland, Labrador, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island boast Canada's most spectacular coastline and every seaside activity imaginable, including long walks on an uncrowded beach and nature viewing on a grand scale. The region may be close to the United States, but it is a world away in terms of a rich and diverse culture and heritage. So now we're gonna start the lesson. When is the best time to visit Atlantic Canada? The temperature is ideal for touring from May to October. All four provinces offer a pleasant climate with sea breezes near the coast. July and August are the warmest months with daytime highs between 70 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, but they are also the busiest months. 
Busy, of course, is relative. There is always room to breathe no matter the location. Plus traffic congestion is virtually non-existent. It's a very relaxing experience for those used to hustle of a large city. The autumn months between September and October are a spectacular time to visit with warm daytime temperatures and cooler evenings. It's also the best time to see the spect spectacle of autumn colors. Mid-September in more northern areas, late September into October in the southern coastal areas. Temperatures in spring and autumn average 10 degrees cooler than in summer, okay? All right. Getting here by air, Atlantic Canada can be easily assessed from the U.S. with direct flights from New York and Boston by Air Canada, Delta, United, and WestJet. By sea, more than 20 major cruise lines visit Atlantic Can Canadian ports of call. By ferry, uh, bays, bay ferries provide a connection from Bay Harbor, Maine to Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. By rail, via rail offers service from major Canadian cities into New Brunswick and Nova Scotia destinations. And then by land, you can choose to drive into the region taken in the scenery along the way from points. Okay, we're gonna eat in just a minute, okay? Give me just a few minutes. All right, um, so from points from the United States, connect with Interstate um, 95 North, which leads you to the tr Trans-Canada Highway in New Brunswick. Getting around, traveling around the region is easy with regional flights to key destinations in each province. Quiet roads and scenic coastal drives pave the way for a pleasant journey to quaint villages, attractions, and outdoor activities. Car ferries provide leisurely transfers among the provinces. Whoa. Oops, sorry. Go ahead and do this. Da, da, da. All right. Um, so key ferries uh, or car ferries leisurely transfer among the provinces. M Marine Atlantic provides services between Newfoundland and Labrador and Nova Scotia. Bay Ferries connects New Brunswick and Nova Scotia and also Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. The Eight Mile Confederation Bridge connects New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island. Via Rail provides rail service to the region connecting Nova Scotia and New Brunswick to other parts of the Eastern Canada, Quebec and Ontario and points further west. All right, next. Seaside Pursuits. All right, so with over 26,700 miles of coastline, there's something for everyone. Prince Edward Island features red sandstone cliffs, sandy beaches, and warm salt water for swimming. Newfoundland and Labrador has a rugged coastline and a long seafaring history. The province is famous for iceberg viewing by boat tour, kayak, and from land. Nova Scotia and New Brunswick share the Bay of Fundy home to the highest tides in the world at 50 feet. Twice a day, over 160 million, come here, 160 billion tons of seawater flow in and out of the bay with each tide cycle. All right, leave, leave this puppy alone. This puppy's an old one. Okay, so leave this puppy alone. Lay down. Uh, she, she was being mean. Yeah, I know. So let her stay over here, guys, okay? All right, can visitors tour all of Atlantic Canada in one week? Anybody else want to read for a little bit? <laughs> It is best to allow more time to fully experience the region. There are many 7, 14, and 21-day itineraries on offer to the region. But for a one-week visit, um, touring one or two provinces is, would be best. At least two weeks is required to really get to know all the provinces. Many visitors travel to the maritime provinces of New Brunswick. Hey, hey. Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island and return to Atlantic Canada for another visit to the region's largest province, Newfoundland and Labrador. All right, six. Okay, test time. Witness majestic icebergs by boat, tour, kayak, and from land. Which province offers this experience? One answer only. Anybody have their thinking caps on? Majestic icebergs by boat, tour, or kayak, or from land. Where would you experience that at? Is that Prince Edward? Let's see. Is that right? 
when it gives us a thing, is that right? Or is that, I guess we'll see, huh? <laughs> Pass rate, current, no. Okay, so let's try a different one. Oh, we can't go, wait, can we go back? We can go back. I was gonna say Nova Scotia, let's check that. Nope. <laughs> How about New Brunswick? Nope. I guess it's Newfoundland and Labrador. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got it. Okay, next one. Which of the following four provinces comprise Atlantic Canada? All right. All but Quebec. Got, right? So what is it? All but Quebec. All but Quebec? Yes. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The Bay of Fundy is home to the world's highest tides. Which two provinces share this natural wonder? My sister has a nose. Okay. All right. I'll go wipe her nose. Hold on. All right. Pick the question. I'll be right back, guys. You got a book or nose? All right. Hold on. Let me get to All right, here we go. Three nose. One more flow. There we go. Okay, your booger nose. All right, do we have an answer? Yep. Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. Okay, let's try it. Yep. Yay! Congratulations. <laughs> Well, we got some pink people paying attention. Here, guys, here's some Pringles. All right, last one. When is the best time of year to visit Atlantic Canada? Isn't it this one? Yeah, that one. May to October. Like one, yeah. Yay! All right, did you guys all pass? Again, this is how we do it. We want to make sure you all pass. If not, we can go back. Everybody got that? Yep. Perfect. All right. Now we're gonna go to next, New Brunswick. Blessed with seafood, fresh seafood, warmest salt water in Canada, the world's highest tides, Acadian culture, untouched nature, musical talent, and countless hidden gems throughout the province. Let's start the lesson. Oops, let me go back here. I wanna see, sometimes I miss some things. Okay, there we go. All right, the Bay of Bundy and Hopewell Rocks. Few places on earth are as awe-inspiring as New Brunswick Bay of Bundy. Home to the highest tides in the world, a visit to this special place rewards visitors with magnificent tides, breathtaking coastline, and endless adventure. The Bay of Bundy tides are best explored at the Hopeful Rocks where you can walk around the famous flower pot rocks at low tide, then watch them slowly disappear, bike along the Fundy Trail, rappel down craggy, craggy cliffs at Cape Inn Rage, set up camp at Fundy National Park, or head out to sea on a whale watching excursion. Miles of untouched coastline are waiting to be discovered along New Brunswick spectacular Fundy Coast. All right, national parks. You have the Fundy National Park. Connect with the land, the ocean, and the wide open sky at New Brunswick First National Park, created in 1948. Choose from three campgrounds that set off an adventure. The heated saltwater pool provides a refreshing place to relax along a long hike and the playground hike. So can we take a Pringles home? Can you win? Take a Pringles Yes, you can have the Pringles. <laughs> the heated saltwater pool provides a refreshing place to relax along a long, uh, after a long hike, and the playground provides hours of fun for kids. Don't forget about golf, tennis, and lawn bowling. Explore over 75 miles of walking and hiking trails, hike mountains, valleys, past sparkling waterfalls, and crystal clear streams. Rent a canoe or kayak and explore beautiful Bennett Lake. While there, have a picnic or go for a swim, take a guided hike or beach walk, just a few of the many interpretive programs offered throughout the summer. And then you have, I don't know if you do this, Cochala Buga <laughs> National Park. Um, there's a fascinating mosaic of bogs, salt marshes, tidal rivers, sparkling freshwater systems, sheltering, sheltered lagoons, abandoned fields, and tall forests. Uh, which 
characterizes the Maritime Plain National Region. The 238 square mile National Park provides a host of exciting family activities. Natural wonders abound in this park that boasts the second largest turn colony in North America, as well as 16 miles of shifting sand dunes are home to the endangered piping plover and witness to colonies of both harbor and gray seals that frolic in the sunshine on the certain sections of the dunes. In 2019, this national park was declared a dark sky preserve by the Royal Astronomic Astronomical Society of Canada. All right, wildlife, awe-inspiring wildlife experiences in New Brunswick introduces visitors to whales, bears, shorebirds, inland birds, and other amazing wildlife and marine animals. Birding off the CS, a fish what, how did you pronounce that? Officionists, whatever, are wowed by the many species on display, from Atlantic puffins and great blue herons to sandpiper and bald eagles. The chance to see other wildlife, including moose, deer, hare, and rare butterflies, provides superb nature photography opportunities. Then you have the whales. New Brunswick provides some of the best whale watching opportunities with expertly guided tours from June to September. The Bay of Fundy um, whales include the finback whale, rare white whale, uh, right whale, humpback whale, and mink whale, all spot purposes, uh, porpoises, seals, and seabirds on a high seas adventure. The people of New Brunswick enjoy, that's kitty food for the kitty. A mixture of British, Scottish, Irish, French, Acadian, and First Nations, the people of New Brunswick love to share their province with visitors. Participate in the numerous festivals that celebrate the people of New Brunswick. Experience a renowned Acadian joy de vivre, love of life, where a warm welcome greets you everywhere you turn. Become one of the enduring, enduring traditions of the Irish and Scottish. Explore the connection to the British loyalists who came north from the USA after the American Revolution as a rejection of the Republic, uh, Republican ideals and an offer of free land in British North America. Be inspired by the marvelous history of Mejkamek and Maliset people, <laughs> shaped by the glorious landscape that has long surrounded them. Big city living on a small town life. Whilst known for its natural beauty, park and beaches, New Brunswick, many towns and villages offer small town charm, unique culture, and authentic cuisine. Shop for French-inspired goods in Moncton and Dieppe two of the province's great urban centers, or watch world-class performances at Casino New Brunswick and Capitol Theater. Family vacations in these cities are a blast thanks to Mag Magnetic Hill Zoo and Magic Mountain Water Park. The pro provincial uh, capital, Fredericton, is best known for Beaver Brook Art Gallery, the historic garrison district and activities along the St. John River, which flows through the city. The award-winning Harvest Jazz and Blues Festival takes place every September in Fredericton where, with over 150 shows by 400 plus top performers from the region, Canada and around the world. Whether it's jazz, blues, folks, blues rock, Cajun or world music, you'll find it on a harvest stage. Culinary delights await in the city market in the port city of St. John. History and culture meet at the New Brunswick Museum and the St. John's Art Center. All right, and one thing I just wanna add also guys, as you do these, remember, um, you know, keep track and you're gonna get all kinds of um, information you can pull and keep it like in a binder and stuff. For, so when you guys sell Canada, you'll be able to refer to it easily, okay? Um, fishing for the big catch, catch a line amidst the calming waters of the world rip class river, then recount the day's fishing tales over a cracking, um, crackling campfire. Come to New Brunswick for a fishing trip and be hooked for a lifetime. Tackle world famous salmon rivers and great coastal waters. Um, any angler will confirm the Atlantic salmon is the king of the game fish. People come to New Brunswick from around the world in search of this prize catch. Also available are smallmouth bass, shark, shad, shod, 
brook trout, chain pickerel, landlocked salmon, white perch, yellow perch, and more. Waters range from rivers to lakes, fresh water to salt water. Outriggers and outfitters and fishing lodges. Professional outfitters are experts at fishing for Atlantic salmon and other species. They will help arrange all the necessary permits, provide boats or canoes, improve fly fishing skills, and ensure visitors land the prize catch. Food and wine. Um, take a taste of the New Brunswick winery to tours, fresh seafood, authentic farmers markets, and locally produced maple syrup. In a minute, in a minute. I'll be done in a minute, okay? Be sure to try tasty snacks hard to find anywhere else like Dulce, Dulce or hearty Acadian dishes. Restaurants options include French inspired bistros, country inns and family friendly, friendly venues. Local fresh seafood, wonderfully flesh, <laughs> wonderfully fresh, cheese, plump and juicy oysters, Mussels, scallops, clams, crab, salmon, and trout make New Brunswick a haven for lovers of fish or seafood. For many people, lobster is king, served boiled with uh, melted butter for dipping, simply grilled or enthroned as the focus of a more elaborate dish. In July, the annual lobster festival takes place in the picturesque seaside town of Shadia known as the lobster capital of the world. This five-day festival provides fantastic seafood and fabulous entertainment while their guests can have their picture taken with the world's largest lobster statue. All right, test time, test time, who's ready? Experience renowned French, French Acadian, um, Joel Del Viver in New Brunswick. Uh, he refers, uh, Joe de Viver refers to which of the following? Love of life. Love of life? Yes. In 2009, which New Brunswick Park was declared a dark sky preserved by the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada? Is that Fundy? No. Um. Was it New, River? New River? Yeah. Pukenberg. It's the last one. Pukenberg. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. New, New Brunswick offers world class fishing opportunities found in abundance in New Brunswick. Many anglers agree this is the king of the game fish salmon. Salmon. Very good. The largest music event in Atlantic Canada, the award-winning festival showcases over 150 shows by 400 top performers. Yep, Harvest Jazz and Blues. Yay, all right. The Bay of Fundy is home to the highest tides in the world. At this location, walk on the ocean at low tide among the famous flower pot rocks. Uh, Hopewell Rocks. What is it? Yeah, yeah. Hopewell Rocks. Very good. Yes. Ooh, ooh. Okay, two down, three to go. Okay, guys, sit down. We're going to be done in a minute. All right, Newfoundland and Labrador. Sometimes you have to take the road less traveled before the real journey begins. A Newfoundland and Labrador. In Newfoundland and out Labrador, the journey can be as colorful as stories told around the kitchen table. As meandering as our thousands of kilometers of coastline, as surprising as a humpback whale breaching in the mist, or as comforting as baked apple jam. There are places that travel with you wherever you go. And then you have here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm playing grandma today. All right, most easterly point in North America, Cape Spear. All right, um, is located on the eastern edge of North America, the capital city, St. John shares the same latitude as Paris, France, and Seattle, Washington. Cape Spear Lighthouse National Historic Site is located seven miles southeast of capital city, St. John's. Stand here with your back to the sea and the entire population of North America into the West. 
face the sea and the next stop east is Ireland. That's on my bucket list. Logistics. To put things in perspective, Newfoundland and Labrador is a little smaller than California, slightly bigger than Japan, and twice the size of the entire United Kingdom. The island of Newfoundland covers 43,000 square miles, an area that rivals the size of three maritime provinces of Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island combined. With the addition of the vast territory of Labrador, the province covers a total uh, area of yeah, I know, but you're, I don't, I can't let you go in the other room because they're doing the electrical work right now. So I'll, I'll, we'll be done in a minute. All right. I'm sorry, guys. Where am I? All right. In addition, um, uh, the 156,000 square miles and more than 18,000 miles of unspoilt coastline. It goes without saying there's plenty of breathing room. To see all the highlights, two weeks are preferred. It is not, it's not, if not possible, from one of the many sample itineraries or select a specific region of the province to visit, okay? So again, you can click here. This is what I say where you can print it out and you can have it and share these now different samples of itineraries and stuff. So if you click there, if you click there, then you can find those additional items, okay? You want to feed the kitty? You can open the box and get a, box, a can out and I'll show you. All right, so Iceberg Alley. When it comes to viewing icebergs, Newfoundland and Labrador is one of the best places in the world. On a sunny day, view these 10,000 year old glacial giants from many points along the northern and eastern coast. Colors range from snow white to the deepest aquamarine and the icebergs come in every shape and size. Go on a boat, boat tour, paddle along in a sea kayak, or hike along on the coastline and watch a sparkling bird parade down Iceberg Alley. Their sheer size sends the mind racing, and that's not even counting the 90% still unseen below the surface. It was these types and sizes of birds that, that sank. Okay, um, just try to pull it open, and you can try to pull it open. Um, the sank the infamous Titanic, a mere 400 miles from our coast. Did you guys know that? Um, all right, icebergs and so plentiful, they are, um, are so plentiful, they are put to good use after iceberg viewing. Indulge in an iceberg water, vodka, rum, gin, and even an iceberg beer. Cocktails, cocktails. All right, so whales. Okay, I'll open it in a minute, okay? Go watch the show for a minute and we'll be done in a minute, okay? Then we'll have dinner and go swimming. Newfound Newfoundland and Labrador is one of the most spectacular whale watching places in the world. 22 species of whales, including mink, sperm, pothead, blue, pothead, blue, orca, and the world's largest population of humpbacks feed on capelin, krill, and squid along the coast between May and September. These whales can be seen breaching the surface of the water and playing along our shores. Catching a single glimpse of these huge and majestic mammals is an exciting and awesome experience, whether it's from the rail of a boat tour, the side of your sea kayak, or hiking a seaside trail on land. Along the way, you'll see caves, uh, waterfalls, and majestic, majestic met majesty of the Newfoundland and Labrador coastline, including icebergs, seabirds, and other wildlife. Hi. Okay, he's okay. He's okay. He's not hurting you. You ate them all? Okay, I'll get you some more. Okay, Sophia, that's good. Did you like the potato chips? All right, outdoor adventure. Newfoundland and Labrador is an adventure's paradise, teeming with spectacular scenery, outdoor space, and more than enough breathing room. It's a perfect place to explore and discover your inner traveler. Travers, um, some of the 200 hiking and walking trails or kayak along 18,000 miles of pristine coastline. Again, guys, I'm sorry. I just found out I, I got asked to volunteer to babysit because they went to the Raiders game with the uh, founder tonight. 
while I'm slaving away training. No, I'm just kidding. So um, oh. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I would have rescheduled. So I, again, I apologize, but we're, we're all family, right? So <laughs> that's all right. We'll get through it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Off the beaten path activities, zip lining, get a bird's view of the epic countryside at Steady Brook. Oh, that's what I found. Yeah, that's a barrette, pretty. Uh, near Marble Mountain, near Capital City, St. John, zip over the historic fishing village of Petty Harbor and enjoy a rugged coastline. Rafting, enjoy a thrilling half day of rafting on the Exploits River. The family oriented rafting trip features plenty of opportunities to swim, surf, and play in the river's friendly rapids. Cycling, um, West, Western Newfoundland is a cycler's dream, especially in Gross Morn National Park. In the summer, get your thrills by mountain biking um, along park tracks or try caving and road biking in Corner Brook. And then wilderness adventure tours, spend your days backpacking, backcountry camping, kayaking, hiking, and fishing. In the evenings, enjoy great food, good friends around the campfire. All right, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, the educational, scientific, and cultural arm of the United Nations. UNESCO has identified sites all over the world that are the outstanding natural and cultural significance. Newfoundland and Labrador is home to four of these World Heritage Sites, and no visit to the province would be complete without making it to at least one, and maybe you can collect the set. The Tablelands, Grossmore National Park. It took 485 million years for Mother Nature to create Grossmore National Park, a place unlike any other on Earth. The park provides a rare example of the process of continental drift, where deep ocean crust and rust colored rocks on the Earth's mantle lie exposed at the Tablelands. Most recent, hold on, most recent glacial action has resulted in some spectacular scenery, a demonstration of the raw and enigmatic, I'm sorry, beauty of the physical world, a near exhaustible source of inspiration. Grossmorn is home to amazing heights, height, heights, breathtaking vistas, and relaxing tours of its geological wonders. Then you have Viking Visitors, Lansox Meadows National Historic Site. Canada's inaugural UNESCO site, the Viking Settlement at the tip of Newfoundland's Great Northern Peninsula was the first real evidence that these European adventures had reached the New World over a thousand years ago, long before Columbus. The excavated remains of the wood framed uh, peat turfed buildings are similar to those found in Norse Greenland and Iceland and are the only authenticated sites in North America. You will be able to see how the Vikings lived and enjoy tales of the adventures long ago. Whaling Heritage, Red Bay National Historic Site, established in the 16th century by vast mariners. Red Bays is now an archaeological site that provides the earliest, most complete, and best preserved testimony of the European whaling tradition. Huh. The site, called Grand Baia, met by those that sailed here every summer, became a major source of the whale oil that lit the homes of Europe. These days, it is a stop along the Labrador Coastal Drive and home to whale bones, a restored chalupa, um, and an interpre interpretation center near the beach. And last, where life began, Mistaken Point Ecological Reserve. On the southeastern tip of the Avalon Peninsula, this narrow 10 by 5 mile long strip of rugged coastal cliffs date to the Edicarian period, 580 to 560 million years ago, representing the oldest known collection of large multicellular fossils anywhere. These fossils illustrate the beginning of life on Earth, the appearance of large biologically complex organisms. You can tour the site to see these fossils and walk on the rocks that once made up the deep ocean floor. All right, next. Yes. <laughs> so pretend I'm your mom and I'm working and you need to be quiet for a few minutes, okay? 
<laughs> All right, culinary. Known for seafood and traditional dishes, Newfoundland and Labrador offers an exciting world of dining options, ranging, ranging, ranging from international flavors to local delights. The province is going through culinary renaissance with seafood from the cleanest, coldest water. Local ingredients and talented chefs who are routinely awarded best in Canada. Wherever you go, you'll be immersed in the flavor of fresh and local ingredients. What could be better than letting someone else cook for you while you visit? Visitors will find fresh, delicious seafood in practically every corner of the province. In a land that lives by the sea, taste the freshest food the ocean provides. Mouthwatering lobster, cod, Halibut, salmon, trout, mussels, scallops, and shrimp abound. Try some wild Atlantic salmon caught earlier in that day or plan a local favorite of fish and chips. If fine dining is preferred, St. John's has some wonderful options with a range of culinary adventures from traditional meals to fresh off the boat seafood to inventive contemporary cooking. All right, what about festivals? In Newfoundland and Labrador, there are lots of things we're celebrating. Festivals and events throughout the province honor music, food, fish, film, theater, and crafts. Participate in workshops, seminars, walking tours, and open performances that will educate and entertain. Some people, some popular festivals include the Gross Morn Theater, um, Festival is the perfect place to find drama, dinner, theater, set against the backdrop of the National Park, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Newfoundland Labrador Folk Festival is the must attend cultural event of the season, jam packed with traditional music, culture, and good times. The seasons in the fight theater festival bring in inspirational Newfoundland and Labrador stories to life in this annual series of plays, dinner, theaters, and concerts. Spanning three decades, the Fish Fun and Folk Festival takes place in charming seaside Twil Twillingate. The large family-oriented festival includes traditional music, dancing crafts, seafood, children's activities, and fireworks. <clears throat> uh, Roots, Rants, and Roars is a celebration of the national um, natural gifts of Newfoundland and Labrador food culture, land and sea, featuring a chef versus chef cook-off and a food hike with food stations spread throughout the community. All right, test time, yay! All right, the capital of Newfoundland and Labrador, St. John, shares the same latitude as Paris, France, Seattle, Washington. True or false? True. False. True. 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 My water in? True. Newfoundland and Labrador has the world's largest concentration. Ooh, concentration <laughs> scared me. Of humpback <laughs> whales and is one of the most spectacular whale watching places in the world. There are several ways to spot whales, including boat tours, Siak, and by land. All of them. All of them. All of them. Yay. When it comes to viewing icebergs, Newfoundland and Labrador is one of the best places in the world. Their sheer size is awesome, especially considering what percentage is unseen below the surface. 90. Is it 90? Jeez. Yes. Yeah. Jeez, that's crazy, huh? All right. Congratulations, guys. Newfoundland and Labrador is home to how many UNESCO World Heritage Sites? Four. 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 Very good. Annual Festival is a perfect place to find drama and dinner theater set against the backdrop, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. All right. So this annual festival is a perfect place. So which one was think it? The first think one. The first one. First one. Yay! Mm -hmm. Look at you guys. Congratulations. All right. Two more. Two more. We got 100%. Nova Scotia. Embrace in the spirit of the perfect road trip as you enjoy spontaneous. Did everybody get that, guys? If, if not, make sure you ask if you missed one. Um, spontaneous discovery in each of these scenic regions enjoy our long-standing connection to the land and the sea as you pair our seafood with wine from 19 wineries from whale watching and coastal hiking to world-class golf courses a lot of outdoor activity is packed 
into Nova Scotia. All right, so you have the port city of Halifax. Halifax is the vibrant seaport capital of Nova Scotia and Atlantic Canada's largest, largest city with more pubs and clubs per capita than almost any city in Canada. It's fitting that the city's most famous brewmaster was also mayor three times. Alexander Keith's original 1820 brewery welcomes visitors with costume guides, stories, and great ale. Walk from Keith's to the boardwalk that follows the water's edge of the world's second largest ice-free harbor, stretching from Pier 21, the gateway into Canada for 1 million immigrants to Casino Nova Scotia. You'll pass um, unique shops, uh, restaurants, and in the warmer months, graceful tall ships. Don't miss experiences. Be a soldier for a day at Halifax Citadel National Historic Site. Discover the province's seafaring heritage and connection to the Titanic at the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic. Learn the stories of the more than 1 million immigrants, refugees, war brides, and evacuee children who arrived in Canada through Halifax at the Canadian Museum of Immigration at Pier 21. Be inspired by Atlantic Canada's largest art collection at the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. Take a city um, or harbor tour and then enjoy live music in one of many pubs and restaurants. New experiences, get a new view of Halifax by taking McNabb's Island tour with Great Earth uh, Expeditions. Experience the city by bicycle with a tour or rental from Heart Bikes. Again, you could probably click on those and get the links, guys, okay? Watch a beautiful sunset in Lower Prospect on an East Coast Outfitters kayak tour. Take in the rugged coastal scenery from a four by four Jeep with open um, top tours and then turn heads along the Halifax and Dartmouth waterfronts with Segway and S. All right, next, communities with characters. Anybody else wanna read? The Nova Scotia coastline dotted with pretty towns and villages just an hour from Halifax along the South Shore is Peggy's Cove, one of the most photographed places in Canada. The graceful lighthouse sitting high upon the smooth wave worn granite of the coast now does duty as a Canada's only post office in lighthouse and is still an active fishing community. Continue along South Shore to Mahone Bay where the the narrow streets are lined with unique collection of studios and galleries of some of Canada's finest artists and craftspeople. Journey to Lunenburg, where the colorful waterfront of red wooden warehouses, captivating architecture with brightly hued heritage homes and seafaring heritage to discover what made Old Town Lunenburg, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Learn about Nova Scotia's sailing ambassador, the Blue Nose, and her replica Blue Nose too, at the Fisheries Museum of the Atlantic. Sample spirits made from local produce at Ironworks, Nova Scotia's first micro distillery and stay in one of Lunenburg's beautiful heritage inns. Along the Northumberland shore, visit the historic harbor town of Pictou, home of the Hector Heritage Quay. The Quay's colorful display and costume guides bring to life the history of the Scottish immigrants who arrived on the ship Hector in 1773. Sydney is a city with a proud coal mining and steel making past that is a gateway to the attraction of Cape Breton, Breton, Breton Island, including the Celtic Colors Festival with Gaelic storytelling local dance, and lots of music on tap. How about the Bay of Fundy? All right, it's discovery from top to bottom on the Nova Scotia side of Bay of Fundy, home to the world's highest tides. The Fundy tides have sculpted a dramatic coastal region as each day more than 160 billion tons of seawater, oops, sorry, of seawater um, flow in and out of the bay. Take a walk on the ocean floor, kayak alongside giant sea cliffs, take a whale 
watching, um, turning, to head over. Okay, no worries, Opal, good luck. I have this recorded so you can catch it later. All right, savor the local produce and wines of An Annapolis Valley. Um, framed by two parallel mountain ranges, the Annapolis Valley is one of Canada's best fruit growing regions. Home of the legendary Gloose Cap of the Mi'kmaq people, early European settlers also farmed this soil and fished these waters. Step across the threshold of history at Port Royal National Historic Site featuring reconstruction of an early 17th century French um, settlement, costumed interpreters, and period demonstrations recreate uh, one of its first settlements in the new world. Search for the ocean's agile giants on a whale watching cruise and wrap the boisterous waves of the tidal bore. Uh, bike across historic Acadian dikelands in Grand Prix, the pre province latest UNESCO designated World Series um, uh, heritage site, oops, World Heritage Site and discover uh, fossil footprints of coal age creatures at Joggins fossil, fossil cliffs, yet another world heritage site. Outdoor adventures in the Bay of Fundy region, you get coastal hiking at Cape Chinaco Provincial Park, Advocate Harbor, whale watching off Digby Neck and Briar Island, tidal boar rafting on the Shubaneca River, <laughs> okay. Um, Sea kayaking at Advocate Harbor, bird watching on Breer Island. And, um, oops, hold on, sorry, I need to do this really quick. Missed it. Okay. Um, and then uh, climbing tracks, zip lines, and high rope courses at On Tree Park, Maltark, Mark Martic. Okay. Scenic Cape Britain, Britain. Sorry, natural beauty is the backdrop to wonderful holiday experiences on Cape Breton, Breton Island. Tour the Cabot Trail, considered to be one of the most scenic highways in the world. Enjoy whale watching, sea kayaking, or golf at one of many world uh -huh. <laughs> Many world uh, class courses such as Cabot Cliffs, Rated number 19 in the world by Golf Digest, explore beaches, waterfalls, or one of the 25 hiking trails in Cape Breton Highlands National Park. It is spectacular in common. <laughs> okay, thank you, Amanda. I appreciate that. All right, so I'll finish this one and then you can take over. Thank you. All right, I'll be done in one minute. Okay. Um, red or yellow, okay, it is spectacular in autumn when the foliage becomes brilliant collage of orange, red, and yellow. Readers of Travel Plus Leisure have ranked Cape Britain as the number one island destination in continental North America, number three in the world. The town of Baddock on the shores of the sparkling Brasdale or Lakes was the summer home of Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone. You can discover as many contributions to science at the Alexander Graham Bell National Historic Site. Hear the lively sounds of Acadian French being spoken in Chetacam, a busy fishing village with a thriving Acadian culture. In the restaurant, sample typical Acadian food, travel to Pleasant Bay, a working fishing village, oops, a working fishing village home to the fascinating Pleasant Bay Whale Interpretive Center. Spend time in Inganish, a popular resort destination where visitors can enjoy outdoor recreational activities, including hiking, deep sea fishing, whale watching, bicycling, and sea kayaking. St. Anne's is home of the Gaelic, Gaelic uh, College of Celtic Arts and Crafts, the only one of its kind in North America. All right, take it away, Amanda. Thank you so much. Okay, here we go. You guys can hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, hi. Hi. <laughs> the Nova Scotian culture is a quirky character with Acadian, Mi'kmaq, Scottish, and African foundations a passion for the past and an unparalleled love of a good kitchen party. Experience Nova Scotia's founding cultures at festivals, events, and attractions throughout the province. 
Celtic Colors International Music Fest Festival, Millbrook Cultural and Heritage Center, Grand Prix National Historic Site, Black Culture Center for Nova Scotia. The scenic town of Anna Annapolis uh, Royal, overlooking the Annapolis River, was founded in 1605, making it the oldest settlement of European origin in Canada. Annapolis Royal contains over 150 heritage buildings, including the oldest wooden house in Canada. Visit Fort Anne National Historic Site and see the impressive heritage tapestry, which depicts 400 years of the area's history and the Annapolis Royal Historic Gardens with theme gardens and displays reflecting the history of the area. In Lewisburg, spend time at Fortress Lewisburg National Historic Site, the largest historical reconstruction in North America. Mingle with soldiers, fishermen, merchants, servants, ladies and gentlemen going about their daily business in this unique 1700 settlement and enjoy a homemade period meal authentically prepared and served in one of the historical restaurants. At Grand Prix National Historical Site, a graceful stone church stands as a memorial to the Acadians who were forcefully exiled from their homes and farms during the deportation from 1755 to 1763. All right, very good. <laughs> you got dogs too? <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's okay. They're, they're playing, they're having a, a wrestle, wrestling match. All right, I'll keep, I'll keep going. I'll, I'll do this one too. Yeah, just do this one and then I'll get it back. Whoever coined the term the great outdoors was obviously thinking of Nova Scotia. Enjoy the serenity and excitement of the outdoors. Canoe the traditional trade routes of the Mi'kmaq in Kamjikujik National Park and National Historic Site. Walk a leisurely trail or hike along the spectacular coastal cliffs rising high above the Bay of Fundy at Cape Chignecto Provincial Park, site of Nova Scotia's largest provincial park. Take a guided tour at Joggins Fossil Cliffs UNESCO World Heritage Site, where 300 million euro fossils are continually revealed by the world's highest tides. The center contains an extensive collection and interactive displays. Relax in the serenity of an unspoiled coastal landscape at Martini Cay Beach. Golf at Highland Links in Cape Breton, Highlands National Park. From cycling, hiking, sea kayaking, surfing, and golfing, Nova Scotia is the perfect place to play. Whales. As many as 15 species of whales frolic and feed in Nova Scotia waters, including humpbacks, minks, minkes, right whales, finbacks, and pilot whales. From a Cape Island boat or a zodiac, witness a whale surface right before your eyes. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. All right. I think we're almost done. So eat and drink. Nothing brings people together like an unforgettable meal. Dine in modern world-class restaurants or beachside at an authentic lobster shack. Set out on a delicious culinary adventure as varied as the communities that dot the province. Seafood and more. Uh, Nova Scotians famous for seafood, in particular steamed Nova Scotia lobster. Digby scallops and Mahone Bay mussels. However, culinary experiences don't end with seafood from blueberry bearings to apple orchids to some of the oldest cultivated grapevines in North America. There's a great food and wine experience waiting to be discovered. Wine Nova Scotia is home to 19 wineries, each a testament to commitment and dedication to the craft. Sample wines from tradition to dice wine to the signature Appalachian Tidal Bay, a crisp, aromic, aromatic, aromatic, <laughs> sorry, with the unique characteristics of the province's cool climate. Spirits, uh, go pick up the games, guys. Nova Scotia is home to two craft distilleries. Ironworks is a micro distillery located in UNESCO World Heritage Town of Lunenburg and Nova Scotia's South Shore. Uh, named for the 19, 1893 Marine Blacksmith Shop they call home, the company distills vodka, rum, liquors, and brandies by hand in small batches. 
uh, Glenora Distilleries on Cape Breton Island in North America's first single malt whiskey distillery. They make several specialty whiskeys and rum, but the best known product is Glen Britain Rare, a Scottish style single malt made in copper pot stills that were hammered out by hand in Scotland. All right, test time. Woo, we're almost done, guys. Which city is the vibrant seaport capital of Nova Scotia and Atlantic's Canada's largest city? Hey, Halifax. Woo. Halifax? Yes. Very good. This pretty town of UNESCO World Heritage Site features a colorful waterfront of red wooden warehouses, narrow streets, captivating architecture with brightly hued heritage homes and a storied seafaring heritage. Lunenburg. Lunenburg. Yep. Perfect. When driving the route on Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia is known as one of the world's most scenic drives. Which driving route? A highway, I think. That one, the first one. Trail. Oh, for, yeah, yeah. All right. Congratulations, Dakota. Come here. Which of the following is the largest historical reconstruction in North America? Mingle with soldiers, fishermen, merchants, servants, ladies, and gentlemen going about their daily activities, business in the unique 1700 settlement and enjoy a health homemade period meal authentically prepared and served in one of the historical restaurants. A fortress. Yeah. That one. Very good. All right. And it looks like the last question. In Nova Scotia, sample wines, including traditional ice wines and the province signature appellation title bay, a crisp aroma, aromatic white with the unique characteristics of the province's cool climate. Nova Scotia is home to how many wineries? 19. 19. Very good. Yes, one more. Okay, and you guys got to have your certificates. You got it all picked up? Okay, we're going to, yeah, we're going to do it one moment. Yeah, I'm going to change you. Hold on one moment. Can somebody else help Bree for a minute? She's, I got to go change her type. <laughs> it's, all right, yeah, fire, hold on. Okay, Prince Edward's Island, the green pastoral landscape waterways and warm hospitality make life in, on Atlantic Canada's gentle island. Roam through the colorful countryside. Okay, guys, everybody stop. You guys go sit down for a minute. I'm gonna be done in one minute. Okay, go, go out there, take your sister out there. I'll be out there in one minute. Just shut the door behind you. Sorry, guys. Oh. All right, roam through the colorful countryside, stroll along the many miles of beaches, golf at a top rated course, dance at a kitchen, um, slide, I don't know, browse through local craft shop, PEI offers something for everyone. PEI, Prince Edward Island. Whew. All right, scenic coastal drives. Driving in Prince Edward Island is very easy. The touring island, three scenic coastal drives. Perfect way to explore the island off the beaten track. Uh, North uh, Cape Coastal Drive is brimming uh, with the Merrimack culture, uh, Acadian music and theater and museums devoted to potatoes, silver foxes and shipbuilding. You'll find the Wild Energy Interpretive Center, the College of Piping and Houses made of glass bottles. The Center Coastal Drive includes a fun-filled Cavendish, and much more. Enjoy spectacular views, classic fishing pot ports and lobster suppers, uh, shopping at Gateway Village and a leisurely stroll around quaint Victoria by the sea. Point Coastal East Coastal Drive features the unforgettable dune city <laughs> at Greenwich in PEI, Prince Edward Island National Park and the Bayside Community of St. Peter's, as well as stunning beaches, lively sites, and meetings of the tides at East Point. Watch for eagles and seals, and try not to miss scenic montage, uh, rustic oral cor corner, and the historic railway museum in Elmira. All right, so as you see here, the different routes, nice. I don't know if you can click on them, I guess not, okay. All right, so Rebel, you want to read? I appreciate it. 
There you go. If you want to get started, and I will go ahead and mute mine. Are you still muted? There she is, yeah. All right, I'll go ahead and finish this one. Uh, festivals, events, in springs, things um, really start to heat up on Prince Edward Island. The Cell at the Irish Hall begins in May and the College of Piping in Summerside hosts the annual Highland Gathering. Then it is pretty well nonstop party time until October. So be sure you are ready for an entertaining vacation when you plan your Prince Edward Inland visit. Following is a small sampling of annual events on offer. Festival of small halls in June, fall flavors in September, jazz and blues festival, Cavendish Beach Music Festival featuring many of the best country artists, garden concerts, and even a celadel on the water. Theater productions also abound on the island, including the following locations. Victoria Playhouse, um, the Charlatan Festival, uh, the Guide Festival, Watermark Theater, and King's Playhouse. All right, beaches. Prince Edward Island is celebrated for its pristine beaches. When people think of the island, many immediately imagine the smooth, warm sand, red sandstone cliffs, soft blue sky, and the white capped waves of the surrounding seas. It's what English, French, Scottish, and Irish, Irish settlers first saw when they arrived were centuries ago. And often it is still- um, My sister wants her tablet. Okay, hold on one moment. Um, it's still the first stop upon arrival. Popular supervised, supervised beaches in the Eastern PEI region in, include Red Point, B Basin Head, Greenwich, and Panmure Island, to name a few. Camping is available at the Red Point, Campbell's, Campbell's Cove, and many other locations along the Coastal Drive. Families will enjoy the playground at Cabot Beach Provincial Park or long walks on the beach at Darnley. On Saturday, stop at the former railway station in Kensington to take part in the weekly farmer's market. The beaches 